So in this practice question, which is slide 15, we want to calculate the quantity of heat produced when 2.50 grams of the chemical ammonium nitrate decomposes under conditions of constant pressure. Now, since enthalpy is an extensive property, uh, it matters how much of our reactant we have. The amount of heat that's released in this exothermic reaction is going to depend on the amount of heat that, or um, the amount of reactant that we actually have. So here we go. We're going to calculate the magnitude of the heat release. Now, I want to caution you. Since we're not asked for the delta H, we're simply calculating the magnitude of the heat released when 2.50 grams of NH4, NO3, is converted to nitrous oxide or uh, N2O and water. The first thing we need to do since this mass is in grams is we need to convert grams to moles. So in this particular case if I add up two nitrogens, four hydrogens and three oxygens I wind up with the molar mass that's 80 0.06 grams of ammonium nitrate for every one mole of ammonium nitrate. My next conversion involves the stoichiometric balance between the moles of ammonium nitrate and the amount of heat that's released in this reaction. Now remember, if this is an exothermic reaction, heat's just another product of the reaction, like water's a product, and like this N2O is a product of the reaction. And we use the coefficients to relate the moles of, in this case, NH4, NO3, which has a coefficient of 1, from the balanced chemical reaction to 37.0 kilojoules. Now, the question that I get asked a lot about this is why don't I include the negative sign? The only reason that you would include the negative sign is if the calculation had asked you for the delta H. In that case, you would have had exactly the same calculation, 2.50 grams, divided by 80.06 grams for every one mole of ammonium nitrate, and then you would have had one mole of ammonium nitrate per minus 37.0 kilojoules. The reason that I included the negative sign in the top calculation was because I was asking for the delta H. But in this problem, it just asked for the quantity of heat produced. So I'm just solving for the magnitude of the enthalpy, the magnitude of the heat energy that's released. Now, I'll check my math. Grams over grams cancels. Moles over moles cancels. And I wind up with 1.16 kilojoules of heat that's produced in this reaction. And once again, if the problem had asked me for the delta H of the reaction when 2.5 grams of ammonium nitrate uh, decomposed to form its products, then you would have included the, the negative sign and then the answer would have been negative 1.16 kilojoules. And that's only if you're asked for the delta H of the reaction. In this case, it was magnitude only, so I didn't need to include the negative sign. All right, so uh, let's do another one of these problems. Uh, this says, and let me go ahead and grab a pen. Here we go. Uh, to, uh, calculate the quantity of heat produced when 0.345 moles of O2 is formed. So in this case... I'm going to use the relationship between 3 moles of O2, which is one of the products of this reaction, and 
the delta H of the reaction, which is 80, minus 89.4 kilojoules. Once again, it's only asking me for the quantity of heat, not the delta H. So in this particular case, I would have X kilojoules of heat that's released or produced in this reaction. And in this case, it's going to be point, uh, 0 0.345 moles of my product, O2. Since I'm already in moles, I don't have to worry about converting moles to grams. Uh, but I look at the coefficient of the O2, and the coefficient says that when three moles of O2 are produced, 89.4 kilojoules of heat are produced also. So in this case, moles of O2 over moles of O2 cancel, and I believe we get 10.3 kilojoules of heat that are produced in this reaction. Once again, why don't I include the negative sign? Because I wasn't asked for the delta H. I was just asked for the quantity of heat produced. So it's understood that it's an exothermic reaction, that heat is a product of this exothermic reaction. All right, let's go on to the next idea. So here we're talking about calorimetry, the measurement of heat flow. We have a couple of concepts. The heat capacity. The heat capacity is just, uh, it, it's not a particularly useful designation in terms of uh, actually quantifying the amount of heat any particular substance uh, uh, is able to hold. But the definition is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a material by one Kelvin. Well, the reason this isn't useful quantitatively is because let's just take water. Now, water has what we call a rather high heat capacity. And that high heat capacity of water allows it to hold a lot of heat energy in it. I can only do quantitative computations with water's heat capacity if I specify a given amount of water. So we have two given amounts. And the two given amounts that we might have is we might have a mole of water. So the molar heat capacity is simply the heat capacity of one mole of a substance. The amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of that substance by one Kelvin. And by the way, I could also use one degree Celsius equally well with one Kelvin. The reason is the Celsius degree has the same magnitude as the Kelvin. So I could use either one, either the Kelvin or Celsius in this particular case, because we're always going to be talking about delta T. And if I do the delta T, it doesn't matter whether I'm in Kelvin or Celsius. Now, what we're going to do most of our problems in is specific heat. Specific heat is the heat capacity of one gram of a substance. So it's the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one Kelvin or one degree Celsius. Again, I can use either Kelvin or Celsius. Let me introduce you to the coffee cup calorimeter. This is something that you will be using in the lab. Uh, it's simply a styrofoam cup. Uh, we call this a constant pressure cal calorimeter uh, because the pressure is constant. And uh, we'll put the system inside, usually the chemicals. Uh, so you'll do a chemical reaction and uh, you will start with an initial temperature. You'll start the reaction. Let's say it's an exothermic reaction, which it will be in your case and you'll simply measure the final temperature after the reaction has reached its highest uh, temperature. So this is a coffee cup calorimeter, also known as a constant pressure calorimeter. I will tell you there is another type of calorimeter called a constant volume calorimeter. It's also called a bomb calorimeter. It's called a bomb calorimeter because this container inside 
is the bomb. We typically do combustion reactions inside the bomb. Uh, they're all exothermic. They radiate heat to the water that's outside. The water started out at a particular temperature. We know the volume and the mass of the water that's inside the, the container here, and the temperature rises. It's constant volume because the volume of the bomb does not change. It's also known as a bomb calorimeter because every now and then the bomb bursts and uh, you have a, an explosion. All right, so let's uh, figure out how to do specific heat calculations. Specific heat calculations all based on this formula, which you must memorize. It says the specific heat of, sub of a substance is equal to the heat either absorbed or lost in, it's always measured in joules, not in kilojoules, but in joules, divided by the mass in grams times the delta T. And the delta T can be the temperature difference in either Celsius or Kelvins. I usually use Celsius. And remember, delta T is equal to temperature final minus temperature initial. We always calculate delta T the same way. So SH is the specific heat. Q is the heat transferred. It could be exothermic. It could be endothermic. If it's an endothermic process, uh, then the Q is positive. If it's an exothermic process, then Q is negative. Uh, the mass of the substance, excuse me, the mass of the substance is measured in grams, and then the delta T in either Kelvins or Celsius. So let's take a look at a problem. So here is a typical specific heat type of problem. It tells me that I have a substance. The substance is ethanol. It gives me the SH component the, or the specific heat of the ethanol as being uh, 2.46 joules per gram Kelvin. And this, again, could be joules per gram Celsius. It doesn't matter. It gives me the mass of the substance in grams of ethanol, 193 grams. And it says that uh, how many joules of heat, so this is the how many joules of heat are required to heat 193 grams of ethanol from 19 uh, degrees Celsius. So that's going to be temperature initial to 35 degrees Celsius. This is the final temperature, so we call that temperature final. Now, first of all, it's not asking us for the specific heat. It's giving us the specific heat. You know that the formula for specific heat is specific heat is equal to Q divided by mass times delta T. Now, I'm solving for Q, the how many joules part. So I need to uh, algebraically solve for uh, Q, and when I do that, I get Q is equal to the specific heat times the mass times delta T. All right, so let's go ahead and let's determine delta T so we can solve our problem. Well, delta T is equal to temperature final. The final temperature is 35 degrees Celsius minus 19 degrees Celsius. And when, do, when we do that, what we wind up with is 16 uh, degrees Celsius for our delta T. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're simply going to plug in our values and we're going to solve for Q in joules. So that's Q. We're going to solve for it in joules. The specific heat of ethanol is 2.46 joules per gram Celsius times, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that you understand how this works. This is 193 grams over 1, and I'm simply multiplying fractions, times 16 degrees Celsius divided by 1, because the 193 grams and the 16 are in the numerator and 1 is in the denominator. I think you can see that the units cancel. I've got grams in the numerator here 
grams in the denominator here. I've got Celsius in the numerator here and Celsius in the denominator here. What we're left with are joules. So I'm going to go ahead, multiply that out, see what I get. So that's 2.46 2, uh, 2 uh, times 193 times 16. And what I wind up with is 7 point approximately, approximately 7.60 times 10 to the third joules to three significant figures. Because I've got 193 grams, that's three significant figures. Uh, the specific heat is in three significant figures. I could also divide by 1,000 to convert that to kilojoules, which would simply be 7.60 kilojoules. So there's my answer in both kilojoules and joules. Simply remember, you've got to know the specific heat formula. Specific heat is equal to Q divided by mass times delta T. And I could ask you to solve for any of these variables. I could ask you to solve for Q, as we just did. I could ask you to solve for specific heat, or mass, or even delta T. So do a few of these problems, and I don't think you'll have a problem.